very much, and thank you for all of your testimony. Uh, Dr. Pavetti, you uh, discussed some the uh, supplemental grant TANF program. It's really uh, a misnomer because these are not supplemental grants, but they are a crucial part of the way <coughs> that Texas, Tennessee, Georgia, a total of some 17 states uh, address the problems that they face, and they were part of the reform uh, in 1996. Isn't it true that these 17 states uh, who had their assistance cut when uh, the TANF program, supplemental program, was allowed to expire this summer, uh, that these are the same states that are already uh, receiving less uh, funding through TANF per person than most of the other states in the country? Yes, the reason why the supplemental grants were included as a part of the TANF block grant was that there were a group of states that really fit two characteristics. One is that they um, had less spending for, for poor family, and the other is that they, there was some adjustment for changes in population. So that they really were just a different way of getting funding to those states, um, but they have always been per perceived as part of the, the original deal um, the reason why they're, I don't know where the name supplemental came from, but states actually, it is part of what they think of as their block grant. And for, for them, it is a cut. And again, it is to the poorest states in the country. Well, I think the important point, we may have differences on the committee uh, and among our witnesses about where the priorities ought to be in making changes here, whether they ought to be on marriage or work or both or uh, the substance abuse issues that are so critical that you you obviously have some uh, creative ways of handling and and uh, note some of the problems within the current system. But whatever your priority is, these 17 states, if this program is not renewed, if it's if the expiration continues, <coughs> they get shortchanged in the funds that they have to do any of the things, new, old, wrong, right, high priority or low priority. And that's why I think it's so critical that any extension include uh, this supplemental program. Uh, Dr. Pavetti, you were about to comment as your time ran out about a contingency fund. Would you like to elaborate on that? Yes. Um, the other part of funding is that, I mean, one of the other parts of the original deal was the contingency fund, which was really intended to help states during poor economic times. There was a recognition that with a block grant, you needed to have some mechanism to actually provide additional assistance to states. And there are two problems with the contingency fund, two main problems. One is there's no money. So there really is no money for states to draw on to actually do extra help. And the other is the contingency fund is very poorly designed. Um, and Mr. Alexander mentioned this in his text testimony, it is very difficult for states to access that fund. And when they do access, there's no guarantee that they actually use those resources for um, counter-cyclical activities. So I think there are two things that need to happen. One is we need to fund it, and the second is we really need to think of a redesign that really allows it to do some of the counter-cyclical things that we know are successful, like subsidized employment, emergency assistance, things that really do um, help families who are looking for work and can't find it. And Ms. Brown, if I understand correctly, this general accountability study uh, concluded that 90% of almost all of the decline in the TANF caseload is due to fewer eligible families receiving cash assistance. Yes, that's a study we did where we actually looked at uh, the time that the program changed up until about 2005, 2006. And at that time, uh, it uh, was about 87% of the decrease in the caseload was caused, was, was related to families who were eligible but for whatever reason chose in their decision-making process not to participate. Thank you. And Dr. Pavetti, is one of the reasons uh, for that uh, low rate of participation that some of the states are diverting eligible families away from TANF? They are. Um, one of the things the states did, particularly after the Deficit Reduction Act, was they made it much more difficult for families to get onto TANF. Um, one of the ways a state can meet their work participation rate is to make sure that the only families who get on TANF are families who can, who can meet that rate. So that if, so they just increase the standards and so it means that the front door is closed to many families. What type of family would be excluded 
uh, well, you know, any family, like in, um, in one state that I visited, any family who cannot participate for 30 hours a week. So a family, I can give you an example of a woman whose case I uh, reviewed in a study I did who had a very serious anxiety problem to the point that she could not leave her house and she had sores throughout her head because she would pick her head. So that she, there was no way she could show up at the agency. Um, that kind of, that person with those issues would not be able to receive assistance in a state that requires people to throw up for 30 hours before they get assistance. Thank you. Thank you.